There you go. Welcome to episode 115 of Quantum Insights. Um, <clears throat> this week we have an, well, all newcomers. I actually thought we had them on before, but my memory is bad. Um, and we'll talk about Quarkus, uh, not Quarkus, but about Infinispan in a few seconds. Um, uh, just we a should quick... have had them on before. You yes, just... we should. <laughs> That's the problem. We, we are redeeming ourselves in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> So no, so so just a main update. So uh, uh, two two things going on. Uh, well, first of all, we continue to doing our continuous uh, releases of Quarkus Two X uh, coming up. Uh, we are doing Quarkus Three uh, at the same time, um, and hopefully soon we'll have like we doing we maintain a separate branch uh, where everyone is kind of coordinating. Hopefully that will move to mainline soon. Um, and the big thing in Quarkus 3 is, of course, the, well, there's a lot of, of things in there. Uh, but main two main things that are we kind of holding up on is the everyone being compatible with the Carter API and uh, the Hibernate 6.2 uh, update. And those two are also the ones that give the most like impact on users. Um, and uh, yeah, but that's close to uh, things will happening. And I hope we'll have an insights once we have it in mainline and things are a bit more, let's say, end user consumable, uh, we will start doing some insights on it. And uh, on that comes, of course, the, the t-shirts. So again, I'll remind people that uh, if you contribute to Quarkus, uh, Quarkus 3, you should have an email in your inbox asking for signing up for a t-shirt. Um, if you have res uh, contributed recently, that email might come a bit later, or it will come later. Um, but the important thing is, we, we I think we have about 80% uh, has answered back. So that's like uh, three, 400 uh, people. But there is like 100, 200 people who haven't responded. Or uh, they've told in GitHub that we can't send an email to them. So that's just to remind you that if you're missing it, it might be because you said you won't be open for an email. Um, so that we can't contact you because GitHub doesn't have any other way of doing it. Um, so yeah, so anyway, it's not a scam. We're not trying to sell anything for you. It's the, just a t-shirt. Um, collector's uh, item. Yeah, and collector's item will be too. So um, anyway, uh, before I'll give it over to Katya and Fabio, um, uh, we have the chat uh, that you can ask questions to. And uh, yeah, that's you do that, and then me and Holly will will try and, and turn it into something that we can ask <laughs> Katya and, and Fabio about. Um, so let me just uh, go go quick. Uh, Katya, can you just give yourself uh, an introduction, and then we'll do Fabio afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I will share my screen directly because on my presentation I I present myself. Are you if you are okay with that? That works. She's awesome. way ahead okay. of you, Max. Yes, it's <laughs> all, all organized. Right yeah. So, uh, presenting the screen. Can we see everything? Yeah. If you make it big, then I'll show Yeah. There we Is go. Is it okay right now? Yes. Okay. So, uh, thank you for this invitation to this Quarkus Insights on what's new in InfiniSpan uh, episode. I'm uh, super happy to be here with Fabio. Um, so I'm uh, I'm Katia uh, Katia Resti. I'm principal super engineer at Red Hat, and I'm a core member of Infinispan and uh, Quarkus contributor since uh, one uh, one version one. So I have my T-shirt one, T-shirt two, and I'm waiting really, really, really happily my T-shirt uh, number three as well. Um, I'm a Red Hat. Yeah. And uh, my Red Hatter since uh, 2017, and I also um, I'm on the CFP uh, member of the DevOps France conference since 2015, a Java champion as well. <laughs> uh, and I'm uh, yeah I'm here with Holly, and it's like oh my god, um, and a LinkedIn learning instructor in Spanish, uh, where I published two two two. Uh, two learning courses on Quarkus Essential and Quarkus Advanced. So if you if you want to learn more about it, go uh, to the LinkedIn Learning as well. And uh, Fabio, please go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. 
I'm Fabio, senior software engineer, working now at Infinispan. I used to be also an internet engineer uh, for four years. Uh, I used to be an Android consultant and working uh, uh, for NoSQL no staff uh, for a long time. At the moment, I'm leading uh, uh, all the stuff about indexing, query, data transcoding, metric, metrics tracing uh, at Infinispan team. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So so, um, yeah, so just a very, very fast reminder on what's in Finispan. So in Finispan, it's a 100% open source in memory distribute data or caches as well, we can see, but it's more than that. It's uh, so it's a product that allows interoperability uh, thanks to the not only embedded mode, but the client server mode where we can use a client in different languages and put data on the uh, on the server um independently of the uh, of the client code um we do have different resilience so we do have resilience and toler fault tolerance data thanks to different consistency levels and availability strategies that we can use when we are uh, distributing the data asset transactions for uh, writing uh, data on the on the uh, on the infinite span stores clustering processing of of data and querying and searching. Uh, these are like the five main features uh, we do have um, uh, on on uh, on InfiniSpan. And uh, so on the client server mode, there is an extension also, an embedded mode extension that it's more maintained by community for the uh, uh, InfiniSpan extension with a, with uh, with Quarkus, the one we are maintaining on the main repo, um, and the one we that is really suited for microservices environment. It's the client server mode. So the client, the InfiniSpan client extension is the one that uh, it's supporting this. So the idea is that from one side we have our cluster, and from the other side different applications like uh, a Java application that will connect using different protocols. Um, the one that it uses the InfiniSpan client extension is the one, the native one, the binary one called HotRod of InfiniSpan, but we can also use Memcache or we can use the REST API. And since version 14 of uh, InfiniSpan, we started to implement the REST protocol. Um, for those that don't know uh, what the REST protocol is, is the one, um, uh, the binary protocol of Redis. So what basically means is that at what point we can use some of the commands of Redis are supported. So using a Redis client, we can write and read from InfiniSpan caches. Um, so uh, since the uh, InfiniSpan, so Quarkus extension one uh, supported already all the integration with the server, um, and the counters integration, uh, the injection of caches, and the counters, and many, many other things, and the protostream marshalling. So uh, protostream marshalling, it's the marshalling that allows us to serialize data uh, in protobuf format. So uh, basically, on the client side, uh, we will have Java entities, and using the protostream marshaller, we will uh, serialize this data in with protobuf and store it on the server where the server will hold the uh, the data in protobuf format the schemas of protobuf uh, to be able to serialize the data back again as well write and read and the um, the indexes um, of uh, the caches where we want to do queries as well because the full text queries um to to work fully in infinispan uh we need indexes and the the way uh, the, the the way it works best is using uh, protobuf data and the uh, proto proto stream marshalling i don't know if if fabio wants to add uh, something here or if it was clear enough uh it's okay just to mention the fact that the infinispan uh, uses uh, hibernate uh, the new hibernate uh, search 6 that uh, is very performant and based on using uh, just that to implement okay. uh, in the set query. And so the ProtoStream API, and that this was until version 13. So uh, we had to you, you use like uh, this annotation protodoc indexed um, and this 
protofactory to create um, the uh, the uh, the Marshall well to be able to create the the book object from a protobuf um, from a protobuf um, implement in protobuf uh, format a serialization format and then we when we needed to specify uh, what we want to index then we will uh, put this protodoc annotation with specifying in a, in a string fields how to how we want to um, use the uh, the uh, um, indexing uh, with this title so proto proto stream uh, creates the uh, protobuf um, schema and it's uploaded to the server automatically that was until the version 13 of infinite span and the ver the first versions of the of the client um, since Quarkus 2, well, since Quarkus 2, there are many things that have come over time. So um, the latest uh, Infinis, the latest extension uses InfiniSpan 14. So uh, there are a couple of improvements there. Um, apart from the fact that we really uh, use dev services on the extension, so there is zero configuration in start mode. We can create caches on a startup. Uh, with a default minimal configuration of those caches. We can configure near caching on, on the uh, Quarkus application configuration. We do have micro profile health integration as well right now. New indexing annotations, caching annotations, and the Kubernetes service binding as well. Um, that it's very useful for the operator and the open telemetry integration that it's uh, landing like uh, very soon. There is a pull request uh, right now. So, um, for example, for what is this uh, Hibernate Search 6 and the annotations is that now we won't need to use uh, strings. We can use this indexed and keyword annotations uh, specifically. Any, uh, so before, yeah. So, the best is seeing the code, right? <laughs> Kathy, before before you go, we have we had a few yeah. questions from a from a TV. Uh, oh. He he has like does the cluster work across DC? I assume that is data center, but I don't where that shouldn't matter, I guess. But um, so he just has, does the cluster work across data centers? Does a cluster work uh, across? Yes. Um, but that's like the, uh, inf the inf InfiniSpan can be deployed on, the cl a cluster can be deployed on a data center and then another data center and we can do cross-site replication among them, yes. Yeah, right. So, so it works, but, you know, of course, distance makes an impact on performance, but correctness should be the honor, as far as I understand, yeah, right? Um, and then, uh, oh, he, he confirmed he meant data center, yeah. So, so that's good. And then I was like, how does the hot rod protocol handle failures? So um, the, uh, the protocol, uh, you, it depends on the, uh, there are different, uh, different strategies, but you can, if you are, you can put a data center or a, um, um, when there is a failure, uh, there are, retry there are the re some retries that can be done, that are done uh, in some cases. And, the, uh, and you can also configure your, um, for example, if a cluster is down, uh, a backup cluster as well, uh, where you are going to do your reads and writes. Yeah. There yeah. are different strategies, uh, the way it works uh, on the client. But that's more like infinite span specifics um, that can be, that I, uh, yeah, that, can be read on the uh, on the Infinity Span uh, documentation. Um, yeah. mm. Awesome. Okay. I think. Okay. So uh, let's let's start. So I do have a, a small project here uh, that I that I've been. So there is nothing. Um, there is no nothing. I mean, it's a. Uh, I'm just gonna start the uh with the quarkus in quarkus death mode and the uh there are several extensions added but there is no configuration here so uh, let's see that because i do have docker running there is a uh, here an infinite span that has started so uh let's see when when it will be really started completely it's starting right now 
So there, there it is. So I see here that I do have the InfiniSpan client, some Prestici, and I do also have the small gray health. There is no configuration. So when I go to the uh, here, ooh, here to the uh, Dev Console, I see my InfiniSpan extension and this link here that opens the console I already opened just before with uh, admin password. This resp cache here is the one, this is a cache that already exists on the server right now um, that can be used, that uses, uh, that it's used for the uh, resp protocol. Um, it's a cache to, if you are using the, Re, the, the uh, um, Redis client, it's the cache that will be written on. So for now, we can ignore this one. And um, yeah, so how did I get this admin password? If we go to the dev services, we can see that we are connecting to the one that started on the uh, dev service mode uh, with admin and password. And this client intelligence is basic, which uh, allows us on Mac to connect to the running container. So it's a workaround for Docker for Mac where I'm uh, running. So I didn't, I don't have anything else. I just have my my InfiniSpan server running. And so what I will do now is come into this uh, Quarkus Insights where I do have, I'm gonna open like this and I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna do a HTTP localhost hello. So hello Quarkus. So directly what I will do is I'm gonna inject a greeting cache. So I'm injecting a greeting cache using the inject as we did before. And I'm using the name greetings. And then in this greeting cache, I will just put like hello insights. So just, just yes, on, so you, you, your product has no configuration except no there uh, is no configuration and i'm just saying okay you inject a cache called uh greetings and i'm gonna put i do a put value and i'm gonna rerun this uh endpoint again so i see something was uh has happened it's there is an error like a cache not found cache with a name greeting not found among configured caches. And there is another message saying, attempt to create cache using minimal default config. So something happened here. If I go back to the console, I see that I do have already a greeting cache that has been created by the extension. The hello insights has worked. And the configuration, basically, it's a configuration by default where we say it's a distributed cache with the proto stream marshalling. And that's all. We can check that configuration in YAML, XML, or JSON. But basically, this is something like, OK, I did no configuration, nothing. I asked for a cache, and we create this cache uh, if it doesn't exist and if the configuration doesn't exist. So that's something that works uh, directly. So um, one of the things uh, of the dev services is that we can change the port. For now, I will. I will just keep on going like that. Um, so if now I guess, imagine I have this developer bin over here. So I have this bin uh, with a first name, last name, and the project. Um, and so now instead of putting a string, I will put a developer. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna put a random developer I like a lot here developer completely randomly taking holy <laughs> uh, and i'm gonna just check what what's happening so um then i it didn't it didn't work it didn't work because it's saying in here that there is no marshalling like uh no marshall register for this developer which means is that um, I, they, we, uh, we are not using Java serialization. We just have a bin. We need to tell how we need, how do we need to serialize this? So using the uh, annotations, like uh, here, I will say, okay, use this uh, proto factory, and then I will annotate each getter. So the first name, 
the uh, last name with value two, the project as well, value three. So that's the way I'm saying transforming this developer into a protobuf uh, message. But um, the other thing we need is to create an schema. So this schema, I will create it, creating an interface. So developer schema, and I will uh, extend from generated schema, and I will add an annotation called auto proto, proto schema builder, where I'm saying include uh, the um, developer class, um, use this file name and this schema over here. So whenever I retry, now has worked. And what has happened here? So if I go to the console, I will see that on my greetings, now I do have the key um, of Holly <laughs> and the uh, type it's insights developer. And I on the on the schema part, I see that the uh, schema for infinite span to be able to marshal the uh, this developer, it's already uploaded on the server. I have never been a proto buff. <laughs> yeah, now you're, you're a pro an infinite span proto buff. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so that's great. But uh, usually what happens is that this, uh, so this uh, configuration here, um, sometimes, well, that it's a very useful configuration, but we do need, uh, we, do, we, do, we do need other kind of configurations, right, uh, on a cache for, uh, so I'm just gonna remove the cache again. And I'm going to create another cache using the InfiniSpan console and the uh, the cache creation wizard uh, that I will call it, let's call it, uh, instead of greetings, let's call it developers. And I will say, OK, I want a distributed cache with the proto buff. But I will say that I want it to be bounded. Bounded, it means that I can say I want the total number of entries in memory. For example, I just want three entries in memory. Well, this doesn't make any sense, but can you can imagine 10 millions of entries and you want to keep like uh, 10,000 of entries in memory. So let's do three. So we have this three here. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to create the cache. I'm just going to grab it from here, the configuration. I'm going to put this. Uh, sorry, well, I don't know what I did. Here, I'm going to create a file, developers JSON. I will, I put the configuration over here. And I'm going to configure this cache to be created using the application dot properties. So I will say Quarkos dot span client cache developers configuration. Yuri is the developers.json. Uh, I guess, I hope I write it down correctly. So I'm just going to double check like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, here on the console, I'm just going to cancel. Uh, there is nothing. There is just this cache. So if I retry now, uh, if I retry now, so we see it was created. If I go into the console now, sorry, I need to refresh. We see that it's developer, the developer cache has been created with the bounded feature. So the configuration was really uh, the one I, I used on the, uh, where we see here, memory max count three. And uh, yeah, and we see that this is, uh, this is working because if I put like uh, different holies, but there is just only one that can be, uh, we can only have, well, here we can have three holies, but usually there is only one. <laughs> so we can see that there are only three entries. And on the metrics, we will see that there were seven stores. Well, it's a bit small, but we can see it here, seven stores, but um, we had uh, we have only three entries in, in, the, in this cache. Uh, so this is very useful since we can, we can have our 
different properties we can uh, use the uh, some some stuff in death mode some stuff you know, for tests we can decide some classes to be on production or only for testing because the on production you might use the operator for example to create your caches or your life cycle of of your caches can, can i set a configuration that yeah. works for any cache no matter how i name it like a default config or um sorry what was the question well I, I, so i'm not it's been a while since I used Infinity Spanner Quarkus, but if, could I set a configuration that will work for any cast, no matter how I name it? Uh, e, e, yeah, you can. Okay, yeah. Um, not in the um, here. Uh, yeah, because the name of the cache it doesn't matter. You see, the, the the that's the configuration, but there is no name there, so you can okay. use this config and put it in the in. The, then what is important here is the name of the cache over and, here. Um, and that can that be like a default or a wildcard or something, or do you have to specifically name the cache? Uh, you need you need a, you need to name the cache. You need to know where where you are naming uh, which cache you are using to use it in in from the client. You need to because you are specifying which is the cache. So okay, so that's no fault. That's no fallback. Config, correction. Mm, the the fallback config is the one where you don't say nothing. Okay. Uh, where you just use it, uh, the, and then there is this fallback config where you have we have these defaults already, as I showed just before. Oh okay. yeah, got it. So, and then um, another thing is that thanks to that, uh, one of the uh, new things in InfiniSpan is that we can configure near caching per cache. So if you want to say, OK, uh, so near caching is basically you holding your client code um, some of the key values. So instead of going to ask to the server, you will have your, your key values near, right, in the, on like the client a, side. A cache for your cache. Yeah, it's, a near, it's, the, it's the cache <laughs> of the cache. So, uh, but that's kind of useful on situations where you need to read the web. You have a bunch of data that it's uh, read it's read very often and it doesn't change much because if it changes a lot then there are listeners that you need to invalidate the local near cache as well so if you are writing and changing the data a lot maybe it won't be a performance gain or a performance improvement but you can have this performance improvement whenever you have many reads holding this near cache on your client and you can configure it per cache on your application. So in this case, we could say, OK, I want it. Well, we said that we had a cache of three, but 20, 20 entries. And another another thing as well is that um, if you if you change the schema, it may happen that you have some like different schemas or a schema that has it's evolving on development mode. But on production, you have different versions. So uh, sometimes you want, you will, you would, you will like, you want your schema to be uploaded to your server on development mode or even in production mode. What not? Why not? But in general, you will maybe want to evolve your schema apart. So you, we can say, okay, so in in production, don't upload the schema. Uh, saying use schema registration false, for example. So that will allow the uh, evolution of the schemas uh, to be handled separately from the uh, from the uh, microservice cool. and uh, so the last the very last part uh, of the of this demo i want to show is um so let's say i don't have so i'm gonna just remove sorry holly uh, I'm removing this and I'm removing the cache as well from here. So I, I remove the cache completely. It doesn't exist again. So there is no cache. Um, so let's say I have this endpoint that it's using a developer service. This developer service I can inject here. It's developer service. So this developer services are really very, very, a very, very simple service I have where I have a hash map with some InfiniSpan developers here, um, where I can say get developer 
from this hash map. So it's super easy with a, a key, um, nickname, and then the developer, um, it's, uh, it's, it's gotten like that. So um, if I call, so this REST API is hello with the, uh, with the nickname. So let's try it here on the command line. Uh, so let's do a get on Will Burns. So I do get the developer Will, and I if I rerun that, I rerun, I rerun. I see I do, I'm calling the service all the time. So uh, I'm calling this get getting service call all the time. So um, since uh, we can use since the some the, a very few uh, a very few uh, releases. This uh, cache result annotation where I will say, okay, use the cache developers, and yeah, the cache developers here it doesn't exist yet. Okay, there is nothing here on Infinite Span. So now I do a get. I get will developer. So let's see here. On the left, I did the call, and then I keep calling. But I don't get any more calls to this method that potentially can be very slow. And if I go to the console, I see that I do have developers and I have will here. So that happened without using the injection of the caches of InfiniSpan, but this caching annotation where the developer's cache was called uh, with the configuration and then we use it um directly to cache on the key here and the value here and for example if uh, let's say i i delete let's say i do have this delete here so i remove a developer i remove will so will doesn't exist anymore and i retry the endpoint, but will exists. Okay, why is that? It's because it exists. It's existing in infinite span. So the way I can handle this is on the remove developer. I will use cache invalidate. So uh, with the cache name and developers uh, here. So if now I retry uh, the delete and the get. Now I do have not found, and in the cache here, I don't have anything. And we can invalidate, like uh, if we want to clear everything up, uh, we use cache invalidate all. That will basically do the same thing, like uh, going and cleaning up all the, all the cache. So do we have these three annotations right now that can be used um, that are very new, so uh, the there are things to get fixed right now. Um, some uh, some little bugs are already opened by the community that they started to use them, and they are already. But you can already use them, and we are improving them over time. So that's my part of the of the demo. Uh, so, uh, can, can you just my I missed. There are some questions. What's the difference between the can, like the cas invalidate and invalidate all what's the so invalidate all is basically uh it will clear all the cache because here there is no key value on the method so imagine that you have a big cache of a catalog a catalog of, that you, you have a catalog of products that you wanna sure. uh don't don't have refresh every day so okay. instead of going on key each key value refreshing, you do a invalidate all, it get clears up, and then oh. whenever people are asking for the product, the cache will get um, slowly uh, uh, with the cache result. Okay, so the cache invalidate is taking the parameters to the method as yeah, hey, that's the exactly. Key Okay, got it. I missed that part. Okay, cool. Yeah, cache cache, in, cache result will take. So this is important. The um, these methods can uh, this parameter is a single parameter got because it. that's the key and that's the value. So for example, if 
someone may ask, how can I do composite keys? So the only way we have to do composite key is creating a bin, like developer, and putting it like a key value, like the key. So here, instead of having this key, um, the key instead of bin, so if I redo the, uh, the operation of, uh, for example, here, the tarrant, so now I do, I should have uh, Tristan here. So uh, instead of having a key string, you can have a, a type where you will have a composite key. Sure. On the key. So uh, that's the way we will, that's the, one of the difference with the caching extension that you can have multiple parameters and it will do a composite key. The composite key in Infinite Span uh, comes with uh, pro creating a protobuf uh, message for the key. And then the value, but usually people use a string on the key. And then the value is the uh, the, uh, the result of the method. So this one that's invalidating everything, sorry, this one in line 42, invalidating everything, it's like a clean of the all the cache. All right. So basically what I get is that, um, you know, you have in, with this, you have the full power of InfinSpan available to you. Yeah. You just be removed all the boilerplate and all the setup. That's just, yeah. Uh, there and, and yeah. you can more tweak it if you want to. That, that's awesome. There is uh, that. That's the thing. That here, I'm using these developers. Uh, these developers, Jason. But uh, if the uh, default configuration suits me, I don't even need this. Yeah. But but usually you need something because you are going to add some backups or have your cross site or any other configuration. And for that, the uh, the console is really really helpful. And uh, Fabio will show another example on using the uh, the console and the uh, cache creation yeah. wizard that came on. And maybe I missed thirteen and fourteen. You do you have the link to the InfinPen console available in the dev UI? Yes, of course. Here on the um, from the InfiniSpan client box, the web console. There we go. Yeah, yeah, okay, of course. All right, cool. Uh, so before we go to Fabio, there was a question we have. Oh uh, yeah, and, and this one I didn't show that we have the health checks here. Sorry, I missed that. We have health sure. checks for for the readiness health check for InfiniSpan as well available because I had this one that can be that can be uh, disabled very easily with the um, with a property. So if we don't want the readiness uh, the readiness uh, health endpoint, we just need to configure um, this okay. one. So that, that health part available will yes. say, hey, I'm, I'm ready if, if the, I can connect to the remote cluster. Yeah, so we do have this uh, readiness. Uh, now I did. So now I, because I put it in false, there is no readiness. Um, so by default, it's enabled. Uh, so now I have it. Cool. So we have we have a, a potential uh, fun question here. Uh, yeah. Francis is asking, what the advantage of InfiniSpan versus Redis? Uh, well, the, uh, the InfiniSpan, uh, there is a very interesting talk already on the website and the Finnish fan website uh, given by Tristan uh, comparing the two. Uh, Redis has um, uh, the, uh, I, I don't know where, what's the, uh, like, there are some, I don't know how the cross-site replication works in Redis, but I don't think there is something like that uh, on Redis, on the Redis open source um, version of Redis. Um, Redis, it's a key value as well, and there are the commands, and there are many other features. Uh, there, there are some features, and InfiniSpan has also query and search, and uh, there are other different features. And we do really like a lot, many things um, the REST protocol does, and that's why we are implementing the protocol as well, to be able to use some of the features uh, with, a, with, a, with a client. Uh, of Redis, um, where the backend will be InfiniSpan, and you, we will be able to have, for example, cross-site replication, but using InfiniSpan, uh, using Redis clients. That's one of the things we we want to do. But they are, in terms of features, uh, the best is to check uh, the the talk yeah. of uh, InfiniSpan uh, versus Redis in the chat from the, the detail. Mm. Cool. Okay. Awesome, Katya. So, uh, yeah, so uh, Fabio. Okay. Uh, 
stage is yours. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'll share your screen. There we go. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's start adding some uh, new. Java projects that will be our model for the indexed searches. And we add a book that is the main entity that has an author uh, entity and a list of reviews. Uh, these entities are just uh, projects, as I said, annotated with uh, product stream annotation. So that they will be will be converted into protobuf uh, data, and uh, the, we have also index identities on them, so that we can use index to have efficient queries and put text search capabilities. Uh, first of all, as we have seen, we need to add a class to generate the model. And uh, in this case, this is a simple interface, basically, that uh, includes, uh, with which we include all the entities and uh, the final name for the schema. If we start the dev mode of Quarkus, we can see something on the Finispan uh, side. And uh, yes, as we said, uh, this is this is a very very simple uh, portion uh, with some properties, and uh, we, you can see here that we have uh, uh, a lot of different indexing annotations because we can add different indexing behavior on each property, but uh, we don't have time to go in depth to all these annotations, unfortunately. So all in finish annotations or search or this, now, if it is annotations uh, derived from the new uh, Ibernet uh, search six annotations. So this is um, um, something new in, for his span 14. And now if I open my dev box, I can uh, open the console and see the new schema. Uh, sorry, this is the the old one, this is the first, the, the new one, uh, with the, all uh, these uh, uh, proto message and uh, all the fields and all the annotations for the indexes. And now, uh, now that we have a schema, we can define an indexed cache that can use the schema. Uh, the name will be books. We can use replicated, uh, distributed is, is basically the same for this example, but it is very important to select the proto stream type. And we are adding, as we said, the indexed capability. We can uh, use volatile cache because we don't need persistent at, at the moment. And we don't need also to add a special uh, operation at cache startup. What we really needed it is to say that we are going to query book method types and we have our configuration that we can also uh, download as uh, yaml for instance yaml could be useful if you need to configure your caches on if it is fun operator for kubernetes okay and what we need is to copy this uh, configuration representation in YAML here and uh, adding a property in the application property pointing to this cache configuration. We can stop the dev service. And uh, I prepared a class that uh, creates some books for our, for our domain. We are basically seven books on Java, nice books. And uh, also there are some reviews that are uh, associated in a pseudo-randomly way. 
but we need of course a rest and three point in order that we can reach the service from the outside in the rest and three point we are going to inject our caches as usual using uh, the name and we expose two methods one method is to set up all the stuff in the meantime we can start the death mode and the other method is to do a query in particular here we are searching all the books that has a description that contains a term this is a full text query because we are searching a term within uh, the value of a property okay the yeah, service yeah. So just just remind me here because this uh, so this is this that query syntax you're using there is is InfiniSpan query syntax or what, what's the uh, great question and uh, yes this is the I call um, syntax that is uh, InfiniSpan uh, syntax but is uh, uh, it is derived from SQL it's a SQL language it's a, it's a SQL like language the only difference is that is the that this uh, um, language supports some expressions that there are typical of the full text search. For instance, here we are using this column that represent the facts we, we are not searching for a field. We are searching for a part of a field. It is a concept of a full text search and not of a SQL Got it. search. Okay. And uh, yes, let's invoke the first method to have some data. And uh, let's back to the InfiSpan console and see the book uh, cache is, is there and we have these nice books. Let's do a query and uh, we are searching for instance for all the books that contain the term Java because it is the path param here. And we have some good, nice job books. But probably uh, you should have seen that uh, we have a query tag here and you can do the same query basically on console without the need of uh, uh, expose a REST entry point or a service. Uh, this is nice for developing and testing stuff. For instance, we are doing here in console another the same query but using another term the term now is concurrency and we have a different match because we have the match of all the books that contain the third concurrency i have prepared also a test class because another thing important i think that is, is very important i think to say is the fact that uh, that mode is great but uh, uh, that mode is manual and uh, of course, you need to add a test and Quarkus, and we have the Quarkus test framework that allows to have all the stuff, all the stuff injected when we run uh, a query, for instance. And uh, in this uh, test case, I have added some other queries to show other kind of queries that you can do with uh, the MPSPAN ICOL uh, language. In particular, you, are, you can search uh, books that have uh, a price that is uh, uh, strictly lower than uh, 70. And you can do also sorting. In this case, we are uh, ordering by the year of publication in the standard order. You can do projection using SEREC. And uh, you can do Another stuff that is not uh, SQL stuff, uh, you can do nested queries. For instance, you can search uh, targeting a field that is a field contained in a nested entity. In this case, we are searching for all the books that have uh, at least uh, one review that content, uh, that, um, you know, that has a content uh, that um, containing the nice uh, that's, that's, the, that's the query. And you can do uh, a lot of other stuff such as pagination, scrolling, that is the stateful uh, version of the pagination, but I, I don't think we, we have uh, the time to go in depth with that. And uh, I'm finished this uh, 
to present this topic. I have another another topic to present, very different from queries. So be before you go there, can can you yes. just uh, because there's a lot of <laughs> stuff here, right? Because you basically just shown that Infinispan is uh, I'm 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 playing the devil's advocate here. So it's like a hybrid of oh, it's a cache with a database querying elastic search kind of indexing mechanism. Does that describe it correctly? <laughs> yes, yes. And why would you, why, why, why use, well, can you just try and position it between a database and a elastic uh, or search index and a cast? Because it feels like it's, it's all at once. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, basically, um, this is a Finispan is a, a NoSQL in the sense that the model is a is a key value, and with the indexes we have uh, the indexing model, and the indexing model is a sort of document model. So, for instance, uh, we have some limitations that we don't have with the SQL database. Um, for instance, you cannot do uh, join across different caches. Uh, so there are some use cases that uh, uh, for which uh, a SQL database um, it is better. Um, it depends on, on the use case, of course. It depends, uh, depends on, on the design of your solution. Um, but um, of course, there are some, um, some lim limitations and uh, some point of strength that are typical of this kind of uh, um, product. Sure. Yeah, and I think I was trying to get to is that that um, this is a lot of power, and you, for the right use case, it's extremely relevant. But also, what I tend to see is you don't <laughs> don't jump on this if you already have a database that works just fine for yeah. you, or a search that works, like it's um, it's yeah depends on the use case, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of. Uh, different advantages or disadvantages. Yes. Mm, well, the uh, the uh, the thing is that this is a uh, a product that can can perform very very fast operations in memory and really significantly uh, help you on on production environment where you really you really need to write and read and write data very fast. And on top of that, usually, I don't know, uh, classic having a big catalog, your session data as well, sessions data or user data in session and so on, uh, where you sometimes you also need to perform some queries over there. So the thing is, OK, do I install a full text query engine apart from that one or I have it already? So um, yeah, it's, there are very common use cases on on. No, I, I definitely, I definitely can see yeah. it from my old old hibernate days of where we use Infinispan more as a uh, well second we, level cache. Second level cache. We always had a question like, "Hey, can I? Do I really have to go to a database to do the queries?" And at that time, yeah, you have to. But with this, you would have a a, a much better uh, let's get middle uh, a better approach for for some definitely some use cases. Mm. So, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just I was just trying to get them to say, hey, this is uh, th this allows you to do well. It's another tool in the toolbox, basically. So it's it's really good. Yeah. Right. It's sort of. I mean, I think you're right, Mike. So that like there is no right answer, is there? And I think that's yeah. one of the things that's sort of challenging about this kind of modern landscape is that there is so much overlap, and then there's going to be lots of factors that go into the decision. You can't just sort of say, okay, here is your database. There is no other option. Yeah, no, no, and, and also, and I think it's a good point you said, Cassie, about like, hey, if you already, let's say you, you had a, you're using a traditional database somewhere, you put Infinispan in as a offloading a cache, a second level cache, or, or even just a, a dedicated cache. It's nice to have the ability to, hey, I can also do some basic querying on it, uh, and not have to introduce another component into this. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, no, it's definitely, uh, uh, uh a super, uh, feature set that it has for, right, for and, uh, uh, oh. Yeah. So what do we have time, uh, yet to, to, uh, for a very late uh, demo or not at all? 
colleagues. Five minutes left before I have to jump. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, Fabio has the open telemetry to show. Yeah. Let, let's go for something completely different. Yeah. Okay, nice. So I will try to to be very, very fast. But uh, yes. Uh, yes, with Infinity Span 14, we now support the integration with the uh, open telemetry tracing. In particular, I'm going to start an open telemetry collector using a Jagger setter and exposing an open telemetry protocol port. I also need to find the IP address of this container because uh, I need to, uh, to use it to configure all the stuff on my Quarkus application. And uh, in this application, we we also using the open telemetry uh, standard uh, Quarkus extension. And we combine the power of this extension with what, what we have done on Infinispan in order to uh, trace uh, all the spans coming from both the client application and the Finspan cluster on the same uh, open telemetry collect. In this case, we just need to configure the entry point for both the Finspan and for the client, for the Credit Quarkus client. And I've prepared to rest entry point to play with the tracing. I need to import also this. Okay. Let's run the Quarkus dev. And uh, yes, uh, these two entry points basically uh, uses uh, the Finispan uh, API to put value, some values on the cache. And uh, uh, the first entry point uh, creates some calls uh, that will be put as a single put. And uh, the other one instead uh, uses the bulk put. So what uh, we are expecting here are it is the fact that, that we will have a different graph for this call. And let's call the first one. Okay, and let's open our Jagger console. Okay, we can see here all uh, uh, the, the spawn traces uh, from uh, the server and the client. The server one uh, ones are green, from the client are uh, yellow, and uh, they are nicely correlated. This is thanks to the Infinispan uh, authored client that, uh, that automatically detects the fact that there is a, a tracing context on the client thread and propagate the context using the new authored uh, for protocol to the server side so that the tracing starting from the server, can use the same context as a child context. That's, that's the basic idea. If we try the other entry point, the bark one, OK, let's search. We can see here a very different graph because the, uh, this is a bark operation. So uh, we do all the puts uh, within the same uh, interaction client server. So of course, this is more efficient. And if you compare, compare for instance, the time, you, you have different times. Um, but this is uh, also to show the new tracing feature. That's all for me. Thank you. Very cool. So not only do you have features, you, you can also keep an eye on them. Very nice. <laughs> and that was fast. That was fast, yeah. <laughs> I finished just in time. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, anything else you want to leave, uh, uh, Katie and uh, Fabio? You have no. We'll give you um, no, uh, on demo. I don't. We don't have anything else. Only I'd like to share 
a couple of things on ongoing work uh, on my on my slide. So uh, where we were just before. Um, so uh, we are working now on the name configuration support, uh, which means that, if, for example, if we have two data centers with two places to, uh, and, and we need, for example, to inject the uh, London cross-site named uh, and the New York City one on the same Quarkus application, we will be able to do that soon. And we do have a, as well, uh, since Infinis Fan 14, new APIs um, for reactive. And those APIs, uh, like the Mutiny Cache, um, need to be integrated on the uh, Quarkus extension. So this is something that it's ongoing work. And these APIs are also preview for, for Infinis Fan API, but this is something that will be landing very soon. And um, yeah, and all the bug fixes and all the uh, new stuff that people will be asking and everything. And for the Jakarta stuff you mentioned at the beginning, for example, with Infinispan, now we are good. Uh, we are uh, we are fine on, on that. Uh, so uh, we will be able to work on on every new every new feature three for Quarkus three uh, very 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 soon uh, as well. And um, yeah, so thank you. And uh, we this uh, demo, this the quick Quarkus and Infinispan insights demo uh, link we will send you. The presentation it's inside the um, inside the uh, the uh, the repository as well available. And there are some links here. And so that's that's all uh, from from my side. Perfect. Awesome. The link. Um, yeah, I'm uh, just sending the link here. Yeah. So we got a very important question here. Is it already compatible with Quarkus 3? Uh, yes, it is. We already did it. Uh, the Jakarta, all the Jakarta stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, and then I mean, we have and the. Java, and Java 17 compiled. Yeah. Yeah. And we have the. Um, uh, what's it called? The. Uh, uh, Hibernate 6.2 is coming out, and then we will be able to have this in the main line. So, yeah, you should be able to cook yeah. right now. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, I guess really I think nice. I have concluded the, the questions. And thank you for guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Uh, see you next week. <laughs>